today. Uh, I'm not really going to call this a re-edit very specifically, but this is kind of an editing story. This photo is an image that I shot of cosplayer Kiri Chan uh, this past weekend here in Brooklyn. And I decided that since Adobe has released the new Adobe Lightroom Classic CC, I'm going to see what I can do to get this image in both Capture, uh, Capture One Pro 10, which I have over here, and what I would do to get it over here in Lightroom uh, Classic. So again, this is the image. Um, she was cosplaying as a female Sith warrior. Her own kind of interpretation, not really, uh, ins well, she was kind of inspired by some of the others that are out there, but this one was really kind of her own personal thoughts and uh, just whatever she really wanted. A lot of cosplayers tend to do this whenever they go to Comic-Con or Dragon Con or anything else like that. So she was like, hey, um, I would love to shoot in this, and I asked her to come out to New York. We shot, and then I decided, okay, I need to do certain things to really kind of make the scene look more like the Star Wars universe and like um, just something otherworldly, and that's what I worked to create. So let me show you guys what the original image looked like. This is the original image, and as you can tell, it's very different. I was shooting with... Um, the Godox uh, 665 flash, I think it is. I'm forgetting what number it is. And the new TTL Pro, or X-Pro, yes, X-Pro flash trigger um, with the Nikon D850. And what I tend to do is I tend to always shoot at one uh, or two white balances. It's usually 3200 or 5500. 5500 is the closest to daylight film, and 3200 is the closest to tungsten film, kind of for that Blade Runner-esque look. So let me change the white balance to that very quickly, and right now you get this other kind of look. But if I change it back to 5500, then I get this look. Okay, so let's let's start to edit. Let's look at this image. Okay, so I start out with a crop. I think the crop is one of the most important parts. And I'm doing this in Lightroom Classic CC. Again, this was released just today uh, when I'm recording the video. You're probably watching this at another time. But um, there are a number of features, uh, mostly performance improvements that you'll see here. And what I do in Lightroom is after I kind of make the basic adjustments uh, that I feel are necessary, like exposure and white balance, those are the only ones I'll adjust at the moment. I go, I start from the bottom and I work my way up. And I'll probably do portrait. No, that's not good enough for me. Let's do landscape. Mm, is landscape what I want? Yeah, it's kind of getting there. Okay. So then, uh, I didn't have a vignette, did I? No, I didn't. Okay. So now uh, I work and I enable the lens correction. I'm gonna boost the sharpness a bit. But the main editing comes from the colors. So what I've done is I've made the highlights like an orangish, kind of reddish, pinkish color. And then the, um, the shadows are blue. And I mean, that's a fairly common edit that a lot of photographers do these days. Um, yeah, let's see. So I'm gonna make that more blue. And I'm gonna kinda change the strength accordingly. Um, maybe if it's like that shade of blue, that would be cool. Okay, cool. So now let's let's work with the luminance and see what happens. So the red channel, that is quite bright. Um, I'm gonna saturate the red channel more. If I desaturate, that's what's happening. But if I saturate it, that's what's happening. To get this look, what I did was I shot her with the flash and I put a red gel on it. And gels are really fun if you haven't played with them before. Uh, I really recommend that every photographer tries to work with them. Yellow, there is nothing associated with the yellow channel there. Blue, though, there's quite a bit associated with the blue channel. Now, if I brighten that, no. I want more details. Purples... Purples are there. Um, I'm going to boost those and kind of do that. And now, as you see, I'm creating uh, some image noise because of what's going on. I'm really pushing the Nikon D850 files. Let's take a look. 
Is that just texture? Never mind, that's not image noise, that is texture. Because this image was shot at ISO 64? Yeah, ISO 64. So that's image texture, never mind that. So now I keep going, I keep editing. Um, let's see what happens when I mess with these hues. Then she turns more orange, and then she turns more purple. No. Then she, that's... So there's very subtle changes in the sky there. And the blue, if I shift it around, that's more purple, and that's more blue. That's more normalized, that's less normalized. That's what I want. More purple? How much purple is there? No, it's kind of sedated. Okay, cool. Now I boost the clarity a bit. Now I lower the blacks. Now I up the uh, contrast a bit. And now I'll probably get a little bit more back from the shadows. Let me see. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, let me see what'll happen if I change the white balance to 3200. Nope, that negates everything that I did. And that's important for everyone to kind of uh, realize. What was it? A shot. Okay, I get that color. So this is... Let's take a look. It's probably loading a little bit slower because of the fact that uh, I'm running a bunch of really intensive programs at once. I could probably nerf the, uh, the highlights a little bit around here. So let's see what'll happen. If I nerf the highlights over here... The hell? Oh, never mind. If I nerf the highlights, no. I'm gonna have to go... See, see, this is what happens. If you raise the highlights, it's not really associated with her skin right now. So what I need to do is I need to go in and I need to specifically change that channel's luminance. So if I change this channel's luminance, more details kind of come back out. And now I get more on her, but I don't want to kill it. Now if I do this, yeah, it looks fine. Okay, it's not the exact same image that I'm getting, but I'm going to export this and we're going to take a look at what this looks like. So this is what usually what I do. Put it into October and uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC versus Capture One Pro 10 video. I'm going to put that in that folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it redundant. Photographer video uh, Lightroom edit. Okay, cool. So now um, I will say official, yeah. All right, cool. All the other settings are perfectly fine. I'm going to export. And you'll be able to tell which one uh, is which, partially because Lightroom always exports with the watermark. Capture one, I've had problems with watermarking recently. So I'm going to keep that there for the moment. And I'm going to quit Lightroom so we have a little bit more memory involved. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Capture One. Okay, so this is my edit in Capture One. And I'm going to reset this. So it's reset. And now I'm working with cropping. I'm going to crop that right there. And crop that to like there-ish. And now I've got exactly what I need. So, uh, Capture One has a significantly different inter interface from Lightroom, but I like their interface a lot more because of the way that it makes you approach editing. So, this is the Capture dialog that's more for, uh, like, tethering or something like that. And then this is for lens corrections. There's a whole list of things that can be done with lens corrections. It's pretty awesome. Um, but I don't really need to do anything else there because the Nikon 28mm f1.4 is pretty wonderful. Curve. Um, maybe high contrast. What did I do here? Lightroom closed, right? Yeah, okay. I'm going to say high contrast, yeah. And 56, 55, 63 sounds right. That sounds like what uh, Nikon shot it at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
work with the color channels in a different way. So um, while Lightroom has those sliders, this has this like color wheel. Capture One has this color wheel. So now I'm going to associate the shadows with the more blue-ish type look. And that's how I'm getting that look. Uh, the midtones are going to be associated with like... And actually Lightroom doesn't have midtone color control. That's one of the big advantages of Capture One. And you'll see just how pretty simple this is. So right now I'm increasing the intensity of each and I'm increasing or decreasing the saturation of each just by doing this. So if I do that, if I do that, uh, is that what it looked like? It's actually fairly close. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to probably do that. Uh, the midtones were probably closer to like there. I don't know. How's that look? That looks like it's getting closer, but it also looks like it's getting, I think it's more reddish. I'm going to keep it more reddish just because of the fact that I like the way that it looks there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with each individual color channel. And what you can do in uh, Capture One is say, View selected color range. So right now, I know that this channel over here is just associated with her skin, the lightsaber, and that. And her skin is being that color because I was, again, I was hitting her with a flash. So I'm going to saturate that channel a bit more. I'm going to say, maybe I can nerf it a bit more. Let me see how... No, she's brighter there. Okay, cool. Now this color channel is only associated with the oranges over there. So I'm going to saturate that. And there's nothing in green. Actually, this looks pretty dope in black and white. There's quite a bit of purple. So I'm going to saturate that. No, I'm actually not going to saturate it. Never mind. I'm also going to play with the hues to see what I get. And then this purple is... I'm going to saturate this quite a bit. And also, I'm going to play with the hues. Am I getting that? Or... Yeah, this is more blue. I don't think that's what I did. But I'll do this. Okay. The red channel also, I'm going to play with the hues. See what I get. That's more purple. That's more orange. I like more reddish orange. Okay. So now I get this color. And now, as you see, I'm getting pretty close to what I had over there in Capture One. Um, and now I'm going to decrease the contrast just because of the fact that I like the way that looks. Or I may... Let's do this. Let's boost the shadows a bit. And let's nerf the highlights. And now I get more out of the sky there. That's wonderful. I'm going to add some punch in the clarity. Uh, if you're an Instagram user, structure will actually be very familiar to you. It's basically doing the same thing as clarity, but not really. I don't really have a true idea of what that does. But yeah. And now let's take a look and see if there is any major color noise over there. And no, Nikon's D850 is handling color noise or any sort of parameters that are changing there very well. So that's the export. Uh, maybe I should go a little less tone heavy on the purple. Maybe I should say I should lighten that more. No, I should actually kind of tone it back more. Right? Yeah, let's see how that looks as a whole now. Yeah, that looks closer. But see, this is more red, and that is not. So let me... I change this hue to the more pinkish. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now I'm getting that color. Yeah, I'm really getting that color. It's really popping right now. I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to kind of set, desaturate that more. I'm going to work with these other channels to see what else I can get. Probably desaturate that a little bit. don't really think it needs to be that crazy. And then there was this channel, right? Yeah. Mm, there is some there. Okay. All right, so now I'm pretty darn close. I really am. Um, maybe I could saturate the reds a tad more. Okay. So now uh, I never usually work with overall saturation because what that does is it just saturates the entire scene or not. And that's really about it. So I don't really work with that. Brightness, though, I work with a little bit of brightness. May even add a little bit of contrast. Yeah, cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. And that's really about it. Uh, if I wanted to mask, I could do that here. 
uh, with local adjustments, but this panel really makes you kind of sit there and focus in on one thing versus just going up and down. Um, it's a very kind of different uh, approach. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this image into that folder and I'm going to say uh, it's this video. Yes, it is this video. And it will be called uh, pretty much the same thing now. Um, capture one pro edit. Now I'm going to export it and now it is done. Pretty fast. Um, and this was the original image and this is getting it pretty close. Um, let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to post this video and uh, you guys will take a look at the blog post and see which photo you like more. And I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, but either way, this is just a tutorial to show you how you would get more or less the same image in Capture One or in Lightroom. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Have a good one. Take care and enjoy.